Okay, this is going doing a shaped ornament and also a what I call a double puff where it's puffed on both sides. So uh, we're going to start as we always do. Of course, I've moved my scissors in there, hidden. <laughs> we cut half inch all the way around approximately okay the whole thing. You see I'm cutting right in tight to those inverted angles. I think that's... And I'm keeping this here because I'm going to be steaming all of these darts back. Wherever there is an angle or shape, just like on a round one, you want to make sure that your darts are small. You don't need, to, this is a dart that's going to come back in and spread in a V like this. So you don't need to do any angle cut, just straight cut back in. See, like here straight in. Just keep your cuts smaller so if there's any curved shapes that need to be implemented you can round it out. And uh, I don't want to make that should have cut that a little differently because I want to push that in so it's not a hard angle, a point right there. Obviously, fast forward if you don't want to watch the excitement of cutting darts.
Okay, so we're going to start. I'm just going to randomly. Oop. Oh my god. Okay, try again. I'm going to randomly start just folding these under. And what I want you to notice is I roll it. I don't want to see any waste canvas. Roll it, roll it, roll it. The more you roll it, and now I'm going to give it a press. Come on, wake up. And while it's still hot, I'm going to push that and make sure it stays back. And here's, you'll see why in a minute, okay? Because we are going to take our shape, get our um, foam core shape from this, okay? Really? So like if you're doing a heart that has a deep V in there, do the same thing. You'll probably end up having to cut, make another cut here. And then you can really push it under there. Okay. Really, it's all about getting that waste canvas pushed under so that if you have someone who doesn't want a bow at the top, they just want their cording there, how are you supposed to cover up the mechanics of an inverted angle? Uh, I guess they're an, an acute angle. I don't find them very cute because they, they are annoying as heck to try to finish. Okay. Okay. Again, I don't want to see it. I want that to be flat right along there. Just roll it in. Really manipulate it with your fingers. Okay. Um, this is where, as a stitcher, you're really going to think about, oh, what stitch am I using along the edge? Um, because doing this with long stitches along the edge line, you have to be really careful uh, because they will loop out and not lay flat and you will be cursing, well, maybe not. Maybe you're a good person and don't do that, but I tend to, especially if I'm alone in my studio, which is pretty typical. Okay, now, points like this are very difficult. I'm gonna steam down this other part. Okay, and I'm not like, compressing it and really whamming it down with my iron, especially if there are fancy stitches on the top because you don't want to compress those. But I am putting a light pressure on these edges. But I know I can because it is basket weave. Okay, or whatever. Okay, so now I need to cut these down a little bit shorter to reduce bulk. Okay, and I'm gonna come in at this end and I'm gonna curl those in first. And, okay, and then bring that one around. Really push, because see, I don't, I don't want that 
to show and this is going to be quite a little lump and you're going to go okay you know it's it's this area is not going to have a lot of puff in it because there's just not enough space to have loft in this area um, this is going to have to compress down so we're going to have to do a special little thing to this area for the puffing okay okay so you can see that pretty much all the way around there's a couple spots and they're usually these little angles curves in where you cannot uh, get this to roll over a lot there just isn't a lot of give so okay all right so looks pretty good to me now this shape it's not like we have a template for it and yet we do it's right there hold on i gotta grab foam cord. okay Okay, I had to go dig around a little more foam core. So, you're going to be tempted to cut it or to trace around it like this. Don't do, don't do that. Because I bevel everything and so I'll show you why. So, we're going to trace around it. Like this. Okay. All right. So now, this is why you do this the way that I'm doing it is we follow this line. And for every, if you want something really puffed, you have to shrink you have to make your foam core piece smaller so that the loft um can be accommodated if you try to put your line here so that it just fits inside this uh you'll never you'll see all the waste canvas It'll never, you'll, with that, with the loft as high as this will be, you'll never be able to compress it enough to use it at this skinny, you know, uh, 16th, I guess. So we're literally bringing it in a quarter of an inch. And that might even have to kind of be fudged um, as far as. We could start putting this all on the one side and then when we pull it around onto this side the loft may not be able to accommodate this so it, it is a challenge uh, if you're just doing this as a flat you're going to want to come to come in at least an eighth um not right next to it the 16th because Again, this is foam core, and you're going to bevel the sides so that you have a very thin edge. And so that when the two, the back and the front meet, you don't have some big gutter. If you just do a blunt cut like is here, that is here now, the edge, then you have to cut, try to cover all of that area, that thickness. I use foam core because it doesn't warp and it doesn't bow when you sandwich the two pieces together if it's a flat piece it's gonna the waste canvas on the edges is going to be like this so then the centers look sunken unless you put a little piece of mat board in there so it's flat you'll see this more in uh, the coaster video uh, where you want both sides to be perfectly level so that a drink can be sat there and not have a problem. But I digress. So we're going to bring this 
and I want to look at this. This was me, so we need to smooth that out. Okay, and we come around quarter of an inch. If you need to, because you're concerned that you can't draw your edge out that way, just, yeah, see, and it's not a full quarter. Um, it's kind of in between, but you can make little dash marks all the way along with your, or take a piece of paper and put a mark on it so that you're going along and making it approximately the width that you want it. Now you're going to see, because of the loft, this foam core piece is going to get very skinny here. But as I'm doing that, I'm not going to have as much padding in this area because it's too narrow to really get any loft in it. So we're going to make that area a little flatter. Like a topographical map, for lack of a better. Description. But you'll understand when I do the next part. And everything I, if you've ever, I know your instinct is going to be, well, why do you put the bevel? Why do you um, come in so far? You, As we progress, you'll see. And as you do it, you'll see. So whenever you cut foam core, trying to cut perfectly straight so that the bottom cut, this side, is the exact same as this side. It, it just doesn't happen. Um, you're going to bend and curve. And so that's why the side that you're going to cut needs um, to have the exact shape that you want needs to be this, this line that you're tracing. Because then if you did it, you'll, you'll see what I mean. So, I might need to replace my blade. And I know I'm not cutting all the way through. You gotta let it. Uh, these mats are awesome. Self-healing mats. Um, Vantage. I get them on uh, Amazon. Uh, because you can literally go into this mat and it helps your blade stabilize a little because you can cut right through. Yeah. That'll have to be repeated to be cut through to the bottom. Come on. I'm just going to cut that piece straight off because if I keep trying to pull it, it's going to keep compressing. It's going to muck up that corner. And I want as much there as I can, which obviously I kind of mucked it up. I'm trying to force that around the end of that. Okay. Uh. New blade time. I like uh, to get these because it has the little disposable 
place to dispose your blades into. If I throw them in the trash, uh, I've had them cut through the bag and a sundry of other things, so. Okay. Dang, it went right through. Wow. I should just do that before. Before I do, I cut a lot of mat board with this yesterday, so I should have known. That'll kill a blade so fast. <clears throat> okay, so now you know that this, if I had done it like this and cut it this way and then beveled the edge off, this back line would look like this line. It would be all wonky and it wouldn't be the right shape. You want the shape to be correct for the back as you're putting your pieces over. So that is the other reason why I bevel. I'm trying to find the best long If you need to, do it in little short bursts at first. So I just find once it's in, it's a little easier. And if you got to back it up a little because it's kind of not going the way you want it to, that's a good thing to do. Now, I am not going to bevel this as deep because I want this to be. Uh, more structurally sound okay and this will be part of the puffed look to it just by the foam core itself okay and now I'm going to go ahead and compress these edges Take that sharp edge off the top. It doesn't make as much of a difference on this doing the top part than this because we're puffing it and you're not going to see that anyway. Okay. I don't want that edge to take away. I want the thinnest edge here possible. So when I put these, this puff, Puff goes on next, this goes on top. What I do is I literally will pinch this down with my finger. So this literally is gonna wrap around and close that gap where I have to put the cording. <clears throat> okay, so next is the batting. Okay, here is, let's see if I can get this on camera. Okay, this is what I get from Joann's. All right, I use a lot of it, so I have to buy it, and it's the most cost effective way to do it. And I use my coupon, so that makes it cheaper, of course. So, take my big long scissors. I'm going to cut a chunk out of it so that it makes it more manageable. To hand. Okay. Now this is going to slide all over as I try to cut it. So because there's puffing here, I put a little dollop of glue on it. And this is for the ease of me being able to cut around it and not have this shift. Because if it shifts over, or if it shifts over this way when I'm this on this side, then I have a piece that's too big and it will make you nuts. Well, it does me. Maybe you have a better temperament than I do, but. Okay, and I'm coming from this side because I can't crank my scissor around that way. And I'll come back in and be doing some trim work there. Okay. And sometimes you see me cutting an angle here. 
because I'm really going to be cutting this down so that this edge, it, any of the best couch, couch cushions that you're going to see uh, have a mitered edge for, you know, like a rounded cushion, a square cushion to the edge. I mean, who cares? But you don't put a square piece of foam into a curved edge couch uh, cushion fabric. If you do, it looks funky and it doesn't sit right. It wants to be square. Now, I have a bit of waste, obviously, that I am getting from all of this. Right now, I'm compressing this with my fingers so that it stays pretty close to the edge that I want. All right, I gotta tackle this this way. Okay. Ooh, happy driver outside. All right, and I'm gonna take that off. I'm gonna take that off. Ooh, really happy driver outside. He's speedy, speedy. It's a four-way stop next to my studio and a very sharp curve. Okay. Alright. So from the back, you can see that it's pretty much pretty clean. Not seeing a lot of overhang. Okay, so here's our front. We're gonna give it a haircut, sort of. We're gonna bevel the edge. So a little at a time is better than hacking off too much. And it doesn't have to be perfect because it will compress, but I tend to over trim. I like to. Okay, ready? If we don't do that, when we go to wrap that around, there's going to be too much to compress there. And we'll never get it around this piece of foam core. And I might have to take make that foam core smaller to accommodate. I'm literally pushing this like this to get any bits to bevel my edge. I won't say it's a 45 degree angle, but it's a pretty good slope there. I don't want this too thick. Again, next to the edge as it compresses, I want the loft to be to the center. So again, topographical map. I used to use uh, batting by the yard, which was this gigantic, gigantic piece of, it was like three feet wide, four feet wide, and I could buy it by the yard. But this particular one is thicker than what I could get um, just in case you didn't see it. I don't know that I got it that low. It's one inch loft, okay? So, um, and it, it's firmer. It just gives much nicer loft to it. Okay. And you can use whatever loft size you want. It doesn't have to be the one inch. They have a variety if you just want a tiny bit of puff, but, you know, it, it just is, now, yes, we have to pull this all back out that we just pressed down, but it has a memory. Oh boy, that had a lot of good sizing in it. 
it does have a memory and so it doesn't fight all the way it wants to come back the way we just pressed it Ooh. okay hold on i don't want to destroy all of if i just start yanking on it all of these little ooh, and i dropped it all of these little bits of canvases canvas that are together are going to disintegrate they're just going to pull apart so i have to look at how i put this together how i yeah all right we're going to push that through down into there without shredding this end okay yeah, I think that might still be too thick. Okay, we're going to start with that piece first because it will be easier to take it out and manipulate it other than to get all the way down to there and go, oh, stinking sugar. That is just not going to work for us. Yeah, boy. This really had a lot of sizing in the canvas left. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to lay this in. Okay. We're going to see how well we gauged will it go around enough. I think I'm going to trim it a little on this side make it see I was conservative and I should have trusted my judgment on that one okay now we can get way down in there yeah just like that now because our batting is now a little fuller, doll needle time. Push that batting up under there so that it doesn't get glued in and your canvas gets glued down. I think we're going to start on the inside curve right there. And here is why you are literally going to put that hot glue right on the edge there and you are going to pull it up let it get a little bit cooler and I want you to pull it pull that right against okay this is how you're going to keep from hat seeing waste canvas around the front okay this is going to get bulky I'm not going to lie to you it's going to get bulky I'm going to take this, you can see that that pulled away a little, and I'm going to get, because they're kind of, just happens when you're on those interior curves that you lose so much of your waste canvas. Let's see how much of it comes around there. It's all about pulling it in, pulling it in. Try not to put a bend in this. If you do... Don't worry about it. You're going to be putting a backing piece on that will, I just try really hard not to get uh, bends, whether it's mat board or otherwise. Okay, so now we're going to secure it on the opposite curve. You're going to see the more I handle this, the more canvas is just going to disappear. It's okay. You'll be okay. All right, so now we're going to take it like this and we're going to push it on like that. Okay, see how it's wrapping right around nicely? Yeah, yeah. We're lucky with this piece because they did extra stitching around the outside. So if we bring it in a little, it's not going to matter. Um, I think if this didn't have the extra stitching 
it would be obviously a much smaller ornament. You'd be, as you pulled this around, you'd be jeopardizing your lettering uh, for it going around the outside. All right, let's keep going with this. And I can see here that we have some pretty long stragglers there. Those can just be cut off. Because what will happen is, is it's going to start to get pretty bulky here at the end. We actually don't mind if these little cross bits are taken out. I don't usually do that uh, on normal ornaments. I keep them all intact. But it's just going to get really bulky. So I'm going to put dollop of glue there and I'm just going to start working these around and onto it. Now your glue has now been consumed by these sides so you do have to come in. Let's just get all that detritus off of there and put another dollop of glue there. Sometimes on shaped ornaments, you have to put a little bit thicker um, cording on to be able to hide bits of waste canvas. Now see, I can see that I'm gonna see that so I'm going to come back in here, I'm going to put my hot glue nose there just to heat the glue up that's already there and then I'm going to push that back around and hold it and try to really get it to be under. Okay, and if you have a big chunk that's sticking up because maybe it didn't get glued down all the way, you can put your the glue gun back on it to heat it up and then press it back down again. You can see some right there that are not stuck. And they don't really have to be stuck stuck tight because you're going to be coming around this and putting your cording on. Okay? Okay. So now we're going to work our way from this this way because if we get up here and it doesn't meet and we need to cut some of this off the top, which I see potentially we might have to do just now from this. It's easier than having to come through here and cut it off. Okay. Sorry if I'm if you can't see, I'll scooch back up again. I'm working with a camera like right in front of my face, so I apologize. I inadvertently back up. Okay, here's one of those angles. You got to glue right to the edge and pull. And pull. And pull. And hold. By the time I grab hold of it, it really isn't hot. And just so you know, I always use high temp glue. Because if for some reason whomever you give it to stores it in an area that um, gets really hot in the summer, like say they put all of their stuff, uh, Christmas ornaments, up in the crawl space in the attic where it's not air conditioned, then the, the low temp glue is going to come apart. It's going to get so hot up there, it's going to let go. And while I sew, specifically sew my cording on, uh, for those of you, you know, then it is going to make sure that it doesn't really split and it doesn't matter. But if you glue on your cording on your edge, you... Even if you don't use the hot glue and you use the Eileen's, you know, it's just you're taking a risk that it could let go. So I just use high temp so that it would take a lot to get it to go. I'm going to do this interior curve first. I'm going to really push that and hold and push that 
and hold. Okay. If it doesn't look like I got enough of it around, I'm going to come back and I'm going to do it again because, and see, I can tell that this piece did not get glued. So I'm going to just set my glue gun there. I'm not even, and I'm just going to reconstitute that and pull it around. Okay. Now, you'll see when we do the fabric for the back of this, it's kind of the same thing. Uh, you need to do tiny darts so they lay around the curved areas nicely. And I can already tell that I am going to have to cut some of this side off um, because it's not going to have enough loft otherwise. Okay, so I'm going to finish this side and then I will pull this side up and see how much loft I have. Because if someone wants it puffy, you want it to be really puffy. and But you also want it to hold its shape. Um, could we do this sewn? Absolutely. But sometimes then it kind of becomes this blob that really doesn't retain its shape. All right, I'm kind of manipulating this to see. Mm. Yeah, it's not going to be that much off, but I'm going to tuck this in some. Push, push, push. Um, you're still going to have to do this kind of manipulating, even if it's flat, because you really don't want to see waste canvas. Uh, the more you have to hide, the thicker your cording has to get. It just, it, it makes life so much easier when you don't have to do that. All right, so I'm going to pull this around. Okay. So there have been these times where I really cut it so much smaller and then regretted it because now I had to cut an entire new piece because I got it glued, I got it all glued around and as I'm pulling it around, it's like doing this weird warping. Ugh, it's, it's not good when it's too, too, too small. All right, let's see what this... See if I can get this around without it having be too compressed. Uh, that's pushing it there. Okay. So I'm going to bring my blade in here. I'm going to pull up just a few of these. Okay. I'm going to make... If you want to put a pilot uh, line in, now I am, because this edge is beveled, I can come in and it's very thin. I do not insert my blade very far at all. Just cut the poster board that is on this back side because you don't have to go through two pieces. So I'm just going to take like an eighth or maybe that's a sixteenth. I don't know. I just don't want much. And we're going to use good old doll needle to just push that back in. Now, this is also 13 count canvas, and so the fibers are part of the contributing factor to the edge, the thickness at the edge. Okay, now I can see that we are going to see lights of day of the canvas. Okay, but we will overcome. We will get through that. Okay, so let's push back this edge. Thank you, doll needle. Just push it back like that so that the compressed area is further in. The poofy -er area is in, and the Batting at the edge 
is still thin because if you push that back in, it's almost like stuffing a pillow. Okay. Pushing, pushing. Oops. Come on, get out here. All right. I'm trying to dump those schniblets out of there. Oof, it just doesn't want to compress in there the way I want it. There we go. I don't want that batting to be out on that edge. I want that edge thin if I can. Okay, there's our glue. Give it a second to cool just a tiny bit. I'm pushing on this like with my fingers to get it over there and now I'm pulling it again with my thumb in the glue. Pull, pull, pull. If it is hot, please be careful. I do not want reports of burnt fingers. Okay. I want you to be safe. Now, because I didn't use my dowel needle first, my glue is going to get a chance to ah, dry a little. Okay. Uh, cool. Okay. Okay. Let's try to get that smooth. Oh yeah, much better. If we tried to force that, this would have compressed even further and we would have seen a lot more of the edge. Uh, waste canvas. Blah, blah, blah. Okay. Come on. Get in there. Perfect. Okay. This top part's going to be very important. Any time you have those acuity angles, it's very hard to get them to go in. And I can tell that I have to push this down in more because this puffing is taking up too much room. And you push. Okay, whoop. I don't care about the side pieces right now. I want that pushed in. In most of the heart ornaments or darts, you end up darting it all the way in. And sometimes I will take this and push like this because for whatever reason, uh, well, or if you have s so that you're not getting it near ink near your piece, you can use a paintbrush tip because it's smooth and it's lacquered and the glue isn't going to stick to it the same way if it hits it. And you can push that right up in and hold it there. And that'll help get you that dart effect on a heart. Get you up in those corners. It's also the way that I do... Um, and you'll see me do it in the uh, candy cane ornament that I will be doing shortly. Because those candy canes, you have three to four stitches in between. And for some reason, that little curve in that area just fits that size perfectly. My doll needle is too small. Okay, so now we have it all manipulated all the way around. Okay. All right. Now, here we go. When we do this, try to use up the least amount of that way. <laughs> Conserve our foam core if we can. This time, we are going to trace it. Try to make sure it's straight up and down so that it's slightly bigger. I might have mucked it up because I put it too close to the edge over here. Nope, I did okay. 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 
Okay, let's see how we did. Oh, so close. Now, um, I try to, ooh, excuse me. It's in my face, so. <laughs> Naturally, just tried to cut it, uh, push it out of the way. All right, so we're going to cut this out like this. And because the back side gets the bevel, it's perfect this way. I am going to just go inside of the ink so that it doesn't hit the ink. But you're going to use this exact same size. And it may look um, a little wider when you put the uh, material on. But, okay, here's the other thing. Don't use this on it because sometimes this can leave a little grain. All right, so I'm going to take this paintbrush, it's a little wider, and I'm going to run it along the edge, and that is going to pull, or just use your fingers, and just pull this edge so that it tips in more. Okay, this is going to, that's the other reason why, if you bevel the edge, you can pull this in and there will be less of a gap. Okay. Okay, and we're around the horn. All right, so I don't know if you can see that. It really, it does make a difference. It does, I promise. It's the other reason I bevel. Okay, so we're going to cut this out now. Uh, trying to get inside the ink. Eh. Oh, shapes are hard to do that with. <laughs> very slow, deliberate, using very the very tip of my X-Acto blade to do this part. Because if I get it too deep in, like you see me doing around these edges, then it can't make that hard turn. Okay? So... I don't use a pencil lead because if I trace with a, around the ornament with a pencil lead, you're going to get lead on your piece. I guess I could use one of those drafting pencils, but I tend not to have those around. Maybe I should. Okay. There we go. And... On a curve like this, I'm going to kind of chop away at it in small angles. So I don't do what I did the last time, trying to take it all in one hit and compromising the back side. Okay. Okay. Now, because I didn't get all of my ink off, I don't know, is it around? Might be erasable. Let's take a look. Are you erasable ink? Hmm. I can't tell, can you? No, of course it's not. Dang it. I'm going to take this because I'm using kind of a light fabric and I don't want to see it. And I'm not taking any chances. Get the majority off. Every 
everything I do is because I have made the mistake before. And I do not want to have to disassemble something. Now we come around this side and we bevel. I think I accidentally grabbed a little thicker piece of foam core. I think this is the... whatever, 3 sixteenths versus the 8. And that's okay because for the back side, we can use the little more rigidity in the. Some might look at it and go, I can't tell the difference between the two. But you could if you were doing double flat. Uh, by the way, when I'm doing a double flat, I still bevel the edges. Okay. So. Yep, you're going to be able to see why. Okay, see that? Can you see the, the gutter right there? Yeah. You can see those edges. Well, when we put the fabric on and we get it all turned around and we push this in that's when you're gonna see why we put the belt on okay i need to grab something else this was done on the fly for somebody that uh is having a real issue with dealing with these inverted uh so i'm sorry i'm not so prepared hold on okay we need iron board up here Pressing board, whatever you want to call it. It's also a blocking board for when my other one is too full. All right. I always put this on because I do not want to pull through when I sew on. Actually, it just gives you more, a lot better... Uh, stability as far as how the silk lays and the material lays and the body that it has. This is why I use this. Okay. I right, got ahead of myself. Next is this. Yes, double puff. Gonna stick it on. I don't really. Okay, okay. go like that and like that. Okay, here we go. Do it the exact same way if you would like to fast forward through this. I wouldn't blame you.
Okay, so this time when we do this, we do not have to worry as much. We have all of this fabric. We do not have confines to stay within the needle point. So we're able to make this puffier on this point. Okay, so I am not taking off as much of the loft. It's still going to compress way down, okay? And it's still going to have, but I am going to leave it with a little bit more. Um, that is where the back side, when you're doing puff, can have a little more loft because material like this isn't as rigid as this. And we can give it more because we have all of this fabric to work with. I mean, it within reason, of course. We still need it to remain the same shape. Okay, now I need to dart that. So, when we do, so this fabric goes like that, right? Yeah. So this is the vertical. Okay, here's the difficult part. I lay it on like this, okay? And I go around it and take off out an inch, okay? Just to get the general shape. Um, it's much easier, sorry about that, it's much easier to do a flat ornament for this reason because as we're moving around, very careful not to have it shift too much, uh, the important areas are going to be your inner curves when you're dealing with this, okay? Um, I do them this progressively. I don't chop it all out at once, okay? So, I'm going to bring it in like this, and I'm pushing my, wrapping my fingers around, okay? The topographical map, all that puffing, compressing it, so I know how far in to make my nips. Okay, then go ahead. Tack that down. These interior cuts, you don't actually have to dart because obvi because obviously you can see what happens. I just instinctually do it, I guess. Habit. Actually, I'm not doing it. It just naturally does it itself. You know, trying to explain how you do things 
can sometimes be amusing because you just do them without thinking. Okay, and I'm going to try to leave as much loft on the back side. I'm holding this with my finger. Okay. So my fingers on the back side are helping me push against the fluff, okay? So that I keep those darts, when I make those darts, um, I know I'm making them, I don't have to push them in so far. I know that they're approximately in the right space. Now, as I compress this one down here, you can see how that's puckered. We are just going to come out a little bit and we're going to reheat that glue. See how that just pushed? And come back here with your finger and you can just push that up a little tighter. It just doesn't have anything to pull against on this side. That's why I do this side, I do this side. Then once I get this little point done, I'm going to come up and I'm going to start on this side. And then I'll do this side. So that it's equal, 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 equal. Because we don't want this to shift so far out of how we had it held originally when we cut around it. Okay, and this piece I can already tell is going to have to be pulled out. And this part will be done, and then you see what I'm saying? Okay, so it's it's not always easy. Every shaped ornament is different. Okay. All right, I'm going to start on the tip. And then I'm going to come in here and I can just lay all of those right on top, one at a time, one at a time, sort of. <laughs> you just always have to watch the shape of this edge because you don't want bumps. You know, you want this to follow the shape of your foam core the best that you can. Okay. And I'm also trying to not pull as hard as I did on the other piece because we're going to see a huge difference in the loft of the batting. It is interesting how every store, all the different stores that I've worked for throughout the years, they all have different ways that they like to have things finished. And how their customers like their pieces finished. So I'm gonna take this, and I'm going to just very carefully do this curve now because I noticed the way I was holding it this side was getting getting very short Ooh, hot. giving it a second to not be so hot okay 
and using my finger to kind of pull and make sure that it's not get, getting all funky in that curve on this side, that's important too. Um, there's sometimes there's no way you cannot have a pucker mark. Sometimes it's just going to happen and you could make yourself crazy. But this is why I do all the inverted areas because it's easier to manipulate on the outer curves than the inner curves. Okay? Okay. Inner curve. So I liked it. Again, you just, you need to do, um, see, as I'm pushing it, can you see how that's making that buckle? So I'm going to put in this inner here so it holds it. Okay. And see? See how it's kind of buckling there? Leave it a little loftier. Also, what does not help is this lovely silk does have striations running through it. So, what I'm going to have to do... Eh, I've lost my doll needle. Oh dear. Here it is. Way over here. It rolled right off my mat. So I need to pull up. And I don't care if I tear the paper off of it. I'm going to take this, okay, and lift that so that I can put this down and have it be smoother, hopefully. Okay, I have to re-dart that because there's paper on the back side. I really hope you can't hear my stomach growl. It's thunder. It's thunder. It's not my growly belly. All right. So let's pull this. Hmm. 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 Ugh. These are the things we have to do because I should have. Long scissors, a little easier to get in there with. Okay, so we're going to start here. We're going to push up. I think that might help. I do not want to make this shredded. See, so you now it's, <laughs> now it's kind of being funky in a different direction. All right. Okay. There we go. Just puff up the loft a little and stop yanking on it. And actually, <laughs> most of it disappears when we start pulling on it this way. All right, I'm going to stop obsessing. All right, get on with it, Kelly. All right, here we go to the other side, to the inner curve. I want to let this relax. And let the loft be extremely lofty. Yippee scissors, get those away from me.
Hey, yeah. I did not wait long enough. Hot glue, hot glue. Okay. So that's on. Let's see. I'm going to take off a little bit of this to make it easier to nip. And I definitely put the darts in on curves like that. Otherwise, it gets too thick on the edge. Okay. So now I'm going to shove a little bit of glue up under that one because I can see that it's popping away a little bit. Oh. Okay. 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 That looks okay. Uh, I really like Ultra Suede for curvy things because it is stretchy and very forgiving. All right. So this I'm going to notch there. There. Tiny notches, tiny cuts. Okay. And we're going to do the same thing that we did at the top of the needle point piece. I'm going to take my finger, pull it so the darts are beyond the edge, and start folding it in. At least that time I didn't burn myself. Brilliant. I've only been doing this for how many years? And I still burn myself. Okay. When I started doing finishing again after having retired for a while, I was not very smart and just did it the way I normally do it. You start to build up a heat tolerance, not a great heat tolerance, but when I started again, I burned the heck out of my finger because I did not have asbestos fingers anymore. And now I try to be much kinder to my hands than I used to be when I was young and silly. Okay, no glue under you, so put a little, wipe a little that's stuck to the nose of that thing. Don't even really have to press it to get any out. Okay.
Okay, look at that. All right, so far we're pretty good. When I pull this, some of this little issue in the bottom that I was fighting earlier does disappear. So you do have to pull it a little bit. It can't just be laid on there and not have some pull to it. Otherwise it's going to look all bumpy and lumpy around the seam. All right. Okay. Mm -hmm. Looks pretty good. Still see a little there, but again, with the way this particular, I just feel like it's, I'm not going to be able to get rid of it. So now here is our two pieces. And when we glue them together, this is what it's going to look like. I will push them together somewhat, but if you, I want you to see how big that gutter is that's a huge gutter and that means and see you can still see some of the waste canvas right even though I push push pushed it around you still see it all right here we go bending 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 I'm pinching this pinching this pulling it down Okay, pull, pull, pull. Beveled edge, so important. I'm even doing this somewhat. Now it's going to flatten out a little bit when I do that, uh, when I put the two pieces together. But you see what it's doing by bending this edge in? Okay. Oop, that was a little too much. Gotta keep that. I usually use my thumb because it's... Okay, see how that... I don't know, can you see that? Yeah, you can with the silks shadow effect that it creates. Okay, so now I leave a hole at the top. And I'm going to leave a hole from because this is an odd shape and I want to make sure that it hangs straight I'm gonna leave the hole the no glue hole to span here because I have a feeling I'm gonna to have to put it here to hang let me see Uh, somewhere right there. Yeah, I'm probably going to have to have my center be here. So just in case, I do need to shift it instead of putting it in the natural gutter there. I'm just not going to take any chances. Oh, come on. Make sure all these edges are pressed in. And I'm going to put it relatively close to the edge. Don't put so much that it squeezes out like a jelly donut. But put enough close to the edge so that it helps keep the gutter tight. Okay. It's always the fun part. Now, 
if for some reason you get the jelly donut effect, this is where your doll needle comes in exquisitely. You ever press it together? No, you really want to keep it pressed together. I lucked out and didn't do the jelly donut. If you do and you see it, take your doll needle and just push it back in. Okay, and it will help so much. And I'm going to kind of compress these curvy areas down as I'm compressing. I really want them. I don't have enough fingers. I want them to be as close together as possible. And they will be the culprit for pop-up gutters. I'm sorry if I, you can't see that very well. How I'm like trying to hit every indent. And definitely this point down here. Because it's going to be problematic as well. Okay, let's see how we're doing. Hmm, holding pretty good. Push this around. And it covers up a lot of sins because you can push it right up in there. And so then if you see little bits, that looks like glue, that doesn't look like. You can also take this lovely doll needle and push that waste canvas under just a little bit more. But I know that the amount of waste canvas that I'm seeing, I mean, look at that. You can hardly even see it because of the pebble. Okay. Now, up here, you're going to be putting, for this particular one, I'm doing cording, but I also get to use a bow and I get to hide all kinds of little sins. Now, I'm going to push, push, push. Look at that. Okay. Barely any going to have to be covered there. Okay. If you need to, take your doll needle and try to push it in or stab it in and push it back. Stab it in, push it back. Okay. And if you want to, you can put another little dollop of hot glue in there and pull that fabric up so it's much tighter. But sewing it in is going to do that for you. Okay? All right. Okay. Now, I have to make cording. So, I am uh, going to make some cording and hold on while I get set up for that. Okay, I'm going to make some, I measure out, can't see my hand down here. Okay. 36 inches. On average, uh, a skein of pearl cotton, you cut it, it's a 36 inch. It's an 18 inch, you know, so when you cut it, it's 36 inch. And... So I tend to do everything that way uh, because I know that I might have just a little bit left over when I do a standard ornament. So um, I'm going to make this so you see every part of what I do. And each spool will give me approximately 10 um, at this measurement, 10 strands. I want 14 strands. This customer prefers a rather thick cording, not because of um, not because it's what I like uh, or to cover any of our boo-boos. We really have done a good job at, at concealing our waste canvas. Okay, so start. I have two colors. 
I make sure to put out three pieces of tape. Get my fishing line here. And I need a piece of tape, especially a fresh one, because that one looks kind of old. So we're going to put a fresh piece of tape there. I have another one for wherever the tail falls. So I take this. And I just let that drop away to the floor. And I just go around. This is uh, the screw that holds up my uh, vise, which is a uh, ply tying vise that I use for when I make cording. All right, so we got pretty lucky. It goes all the way. So when we cut this, right? And to make longer cording, basically what you do is you just move your tack further down. And if I wanted it to be uh, approximately six feet, actually it ends up being about five feet from shrinkage uh, twist rate, um, I would just cut it at one end and let have the double amount so it's a nice long piece so that's one two three four i think i actually have 15 here but that's okay all right and it's the reason i like this is because at this end, the screw is much bigger. All these go to the top. Cut it. Yeah. Have it there. Cut it at this end while holding it. Then. This end. Okay. This end's still nice and even. And I'm holding this end. And I pull the loops up and cut them. Now, uh, this okay and I'm gonna put a weight on the end of that so it holds them all together for the most part it's all curly Q spaghetti back there but we don't care that's fine it'll all smooth out when we pick it up sorry I have to message someone okay Apologies. That actually, I'm going to do the preemptive. Then there. Okay. Gonna, first one, I just drop away. Whoop! Forgot to put my tag back. Hope I put it in the right hole. This time I'm going to put it on the back part. Because it'll pop off easier and I don't have to take that out. Not that it matters at this point. But if you're just starting, you might want to do it in further so that if you get a lot of strands on here, it doesn't pop off because you let it go too slack. Don't pull tight. 
back and forth because it'll stretch and it will not measure up uh, the same as your other one if you don't keep the tension the same on all of them. Okay, so here we go. Here. And go ahead and So let's count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. I was right. One more out of it than I thought I would. So there's twelve, thirteen. together there pull this this now um, I can tell that this blue is a little bit thicker than the red. Um, sometimes it's the color, sometimes it's the braiding. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Now, because this seems a little coarser to me, I'm going to keep that 15 there. Now, I'm going to take this. I'm going to cut this. I have the fishing line in my mouth. Make sure that all your bits that are up and down in there, because they're not going to be even, because I kind of laid it down. And hold that knot there. Okay. Now like in my video always 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 put glue deep inside this not only allows me to have something to twist hard against but when I go to put it into uh, the gap up here or if I had to bring it around and slide it in, it's skinny. It mashes it all down. Okay. I'm gonna come here. I'm gonna pull some of that. Okay. All right. Now I want it nice and skinny. Also, at this point because I'm about to put it into my fly tying vise and it doesn't have a very wide opening. <laughs> so, just gotta get that down. I'm gonna scooch it back just a skosh so you can see it. All right, now smooth, smooth, smooth. Out, make sure that all of our strands oops by moving that I moved your ability to see my fingers at the other end. Okay. All right, I'm just gonna make sure you can see my fingers. 
Okay, we're smoothing. Well, you can sort of see. Now, I put it on the top. And because I'm going to twist it clockwise, as I start to twist, I pinch, I roll that tape nice and tight around. Okay. Now, because my hands are killing me, I'm going to take the twister, which is a cording maker, but for something this thick, it, it just doesn't put it, take it down tight enough. It just doesn't have the torque. And they'll pop right out of this thing. And Krynik, because it is plastic, uh, it really does not compress a lot. All right, getting it tight, tight, tight. I let this go. Do you see this kind of bowing here? I'm trying to, there, you can see it on that piece of tape. See how it's buckling? If I let go of this, even a little bit, uh, that's gonna roll up on itself and it's a pain and you have to unfurl it in order to get it to relinquish that roll and it never really goes back as nicely as like the first time you do it okay top of the uh, hold it up like this a little bit sorry the autofocus isn't that great so i start at the left side of the tape I roll it under and I kind of compress and pinch that tape so it really mashes down on there really rolls it tightly okay. now just remember to not put make it so that those turn versus <laughs> the head spins the other way struggling it's struggling and if I let it too loose it'll start to double over pull 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 this plastic really likes to stretch get a as I'm doing it okay okay there a little more should should be able to twist it to the same place because it is Krynik. Oop, this one. All right, this time put it on the opposite end of the tape, closest to me, because I am turning it counterclockwise. Slowly controlled. Don't let it sproing back the wrong way. Now, over twist, over twist, keep twisting, keep twisting. Now, I, we all know it's not going to stay this tight when I let it go. I'm pulling it and running, and as I'm running it, I'm making these. It's getting a little hot in my hand, actually, because of the metallic and slowly let it come back. Okay? Okay. All right. Okay. That's our cording. Yes, they like it this thick. Now, double check. Because if I have to make another short piece of cording, I wanna know. No, now, then getting all the flipping the way around this, but it usually works out when it's ornament size. Okay. All right, that goes to there. All right. Come over here. We're going to do a 
three inch loop so we have ample look at that just enough okay all right now before we get into the sewing and all of that loveliness i am going to uh, move the camera back and down so that turn the light back on okay Now, get rid of this stuff. You over there, you over there. I need a big piece of fishing line for our boat. These uh, were chosen for me, sent to me. So this is what they want for a bow. So I'm going to put that there. Put the down needle where I can find it since I don't need it right now. So this is going to be a layered bow. All right, we're going to take this. Actually, going to back that up a little bit because I need to have it more in my lap than over the table. Okay, we lay it one on top of the other. Okay. And because of the thickness, uh, the width of the ribbon, I am just going to be doing a set of loops, a center, and a set of loops. Okay. So we make our loop. Try to keep it petite so it's not overwhelming, which isn't always easy to do with white or ribbon we make it work okay i'm kind of pulling out where i compressed uh, this person does not uh, want the tails to hang off but i still need a little bit of tail there because i'm going to cut that off i need to be able to hold it come on behave I know, can't behave if I'm the one who put it there. Okay, and pinch. Pull your finger in and straighten. Okay, same with this. Get it straight, best you can. It's catching on my thumb. Okay, center, straighten these out on the back side, right? Push that down a little so I can kind of pull. I'm pulling this ribbon on top of this first set of loops. And then roll it for your center loop. Okay. Get it set there. And I'm going to try to pull that in to make it a little bit smaller. Trying to keep these layers straight is not easy, and I am going to be a glitter monster by the time I am done with this. Ah, red glitter. Okay. Come on, flatten out glitter ribbon. All right. And I'm going to pull this. All right, that uh, looks pretty close to the same size. Oh, my thumb is cramping. All right, and we push, pull our finger back. I'm pushing against this ribbon so that it, the first loop doesn't pop out. I'm gonna make that a little smaller. Gonna cut. And my fishing line is here. And I kind of pull that so that I can get that through. This is really thick. So I'm going to try to get this in the center as 
much as I can. I think this loop needs to come over a little. Probably wrong. Probably just pulled it. And then I'm going to bring this fishing line back through again. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. There we go. Okay. What this does is it will cinch. I'm trying to even out my, my tails. Now, I don't want that. I want to lay the... Okay, that looks uneven. So I need to pull the top of this here. I'm trying to make sure it's centered in the loops. It is the hardest part of this. That looks pretty close. Okay, we can fudge with it later. So now because I did that through, it has something to pull against. If I tried to do this without pulling that through twice, the fishing line, um, it would stress the fishing line and potentially break it. This way it... Okay. Uh, I gotta find a dark place in the background. To... Yes, I've got it between my teeth again. I'm holding the knot under my finger. Okay. Okay. I try to move my knot, but I'm not going to be able to because I pulled that other one back through again. I did the two. And I'm taking my finger in and I'm twisting it back to try to get that particular one to lay a little nicer. Now you can take this ribbon and you can uh, fluff out all the different colors so it splays out. All right, right now I'm going to take and I'm going to cut with a little bit of extra. I don't know if you can see that I'm not cutting right against the knot. I'm leaving about an eighth of an inch extra there. And I'm going to take this little dollop of glue that is on the end of my glue gun. I take a little because I don't want to burn myself. And I mash that hot glue down on so that it kind of covers that knot as well. Okay, I'm going to come in here. I'm going to pull all of this together and I'm going to cut it. Okay, because they don't want to see that. They don't want the tails to hang over. So I'm actually going to take a little hot glue and I'm going to very carefully, because this ribbon has metal in it, it's metallic, and it gets hot. Okay, I'm going to do this side. And you can see on this side, it's not going to be as easy because that first tail, I should have made it longer. Because if I had, it wouldn't be bowing like that. So I'm going to take this, I'm going to lift it up. Okay. I'm going to cut it. And again, I'm going to take this out. Should I use my knife on that? I wouldn't have burnt myself that way. Now, you can see there's still some little tails here. Meh. Cut them off. There's one way deep in there. Just make sure not to cut the loop. My finger's stuck. <laughs> okay. okay. 
right. Now. I'm try to make that not quite as bulbous and sticking out because when I pushed on it. So I'm putting a little spit on the end of my finger, you know, like when you used to smash a candle so you don't get burnt. Because um, oddly enough, it makes the hot glue shiny and doesn't look like a dull hot glue nub. Okay. Okay, I need to stop fiddling with this because I'm just gonna make it twist in a bad way. It's not gonna look as nice. Oop, even out, even out. I take little balls of tissue and I put them in my bows for shipping so they're not all mashed when they get there. Cotton balls. I tried cotton balls, but they just leave little bits of fluff everywhere. So when I put this on, which side looks... It's got a little twist to it. So I'm going to pull this up like that. There we go. Okay, so when it goes on, it'll go on like that. So I'm going to lay it like that. I'm going to get rid of all of this. Glitter. Okay. All right. One second. All right. So, ooh, wow. Yeah, that glitter's not coming off unless I, even when I wash my hands, it probably won't. So, we're going to start by making our loop. I do my loop separately. Um, I like the way it hangs better. And I used to do it where I did it all one piece and then it did this curly thing at the top and then I put one down in. So I just flipped it and then I put it in. Thing is, is when you do that, uh, because you think you're saving time of doing what I'm about to do, it can sometimes make it so the um, thing, uh, hanger, twists back on itself. And then you get this hanger that doesn't hang straight. It's got a it's twisted back on itself. Okay. So we start with this. Like. Coming down, coming down, coming down. Two. There. this. Tie it off so it doesn't unravel out of control. Okay. There. Now, because Mash that out. And I think I need another glue stick in this. I like to fill this with glue again because as I'm pushing this down in, if that gives way, it's not going to unfurl. Okay. Get my paddle pliers. Oh, I didn't clean them after the last gooping. Oop. 
and I'm compressing right up by that fishing line because I don't want to see, I can already see I have big goops there. Okay. Like that. And that. Trim it there. Now, so I am not gluing this on, but I am putting a dollop of glue where this hanger is. Why is that you say? Well, if for some reason my fishing line fails, I have a little extra goodness in there to help keep it. Now let's see. Oh, pretty close to center, but it does shift a little. So I'm going to push it over to the left. Okay. Sorry. Ah, there. Hangs nice and even. Oh, that's going to make me crazy. Okay, I got to get this glitter off my hands. I will be right back. Okay, de-glitter myself, but kind of what's the point when just going to keep happening? Okay, now. It always isn't, it isn't always fun trying to sew on cording to a shaped ornament. So I'm actually probably going to elicit my smaller needle as well. On any inner corners, I'll have to sew backwards potentially. Not fun. Okay. A nub, big white crusty glue nub. I could see it was going to be problematic. Okay, doll needle. And while I did do this, I am. Yeah, that'll be okay. It'll close up. All right. Hmm. Am I going to be able to fit? Okay, I'm going to cut this down a little bit because I pushed that so far over and I'm afraid that I'm going to run into a glue dam in there. Get that. Pushed in like that. Oop. Just pushed it over a little. All right, I'm going to stabilize it by shoving a pin in there. Okay. Yeah, it's still in the right spot. All right. Extra set of cheaters over my glasses so I can actually see it close to me. Get in there. 
have to continue to manipulate this. Oh, cheese and crust. I want to grab there and I want to go through the end of the piece of cording. This. Okay. Going to pull this back a little bit because yeah, I measured it, but you know, sometimes I get worried. All right, if you want to fast forward, I'm just gonna be stitching this on. Pulled it in a way I didn't want to pull it. Dang it. Come on, get in there. All right, I'm going to play with that in a minute at the end. Okay. Uh, stop fast forwarding. I am sewing this cording onto the needle point and here's why. If I sew this into the material every place that I stitch it it's gonna pull and this silk can get run lines and it just it looks terrible. Okay um, I will be tacking the top of it and yes that is the other reason why I use the high temp glue oh, cheese and crust it's just not staying where it should Gotta be pulled deeper in. All right, like that. Pushing it back with my finger. Okay. Yes, 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 because then I can do this after I go. Okay. It's all because. Some of that jelly donut squished up in there so I'm going to take this I'm going to put a pin here so that it stays are you going to stay there or are you going to be a pain okay now I have something to kind of pull against but it's not going to pull so hard I really torque on this as I go around.
So I'm having to arch this because I want it to come up right there. So that this point, I'm putting a stitch and it's going to anchor it in that curve. Okay. Caught a little piece of fiber. I have to cut it. Cinch it right down on that curve. Okay. 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 Now, here at the point, I'm going to grab a little piece of material here. I'm going to knot it to help so that the front and the back Okay 
All right. Okay. Now, as you're going around, you should be pushing this back into your very minor gutter because we did a good job of getting pushing this up so that you don't ever see it. Even if we did a thin cord, you would not see it. I'm staying on the back side of the needle point as I'm doing this, okay? This is where I'm switching to a smaller curved needle. Okay, and take it, go through the blue loop. Try not to pierce any of the blue. Come on. There we go. There we go. There we go. And it goes right down to that spot. Now we take this. We're going to go kind of at an in between stitch. So I'm going to twist this over. Okay. 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 Keeping it all hidden. I'm going to take this opportunity to put not here. Caught. There. Okay. And 
I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to keep this small needle on. Make sure it rolls into the gutter. Come to the back side of the needle point. And we're going to come right there. Okay. Yeah, we're okay. We're okay. Yep. Yeah. Okay. And where are we at here? Okay, so we want the red there. Or is it coming up? It's coming up in my fabric. Mm. It's going to be a problem, child. Okay. It's going to be a problem, child, with that. Do not want to rip that to shreds because that is a curve point that we do not need to destroy those. Okay, sorry. Through the red, back side, we're going to come. There. Okay. Now, I'm going to push this waste canvas back in. Okay. I'm going to twist this over like that. I'm going to pull it down. Okay. Now, now that we're here, by grabbing a little piece of material in the glue area, I come up here, down here, okay, kind of doubling back. Okay, and grab the glue here. Come on the back side. Ugh, sorry. Come up there. Okay. All right. That cinched it right down next to it. Okay. I keep yanking all over it so it's pulling it this way and pulling it that way. Okay. All right, now. All right. Might have to go back and put a stitch in there. Mm, no, 
I'm okay. All right, just keep working my way around. Pull that into there. So I got that bit of extra waste canvas there. So we're going to try to do multiple stitches. Where am I? Yeah, I'm way back there. Okay. We go there. Tight. Now, uh, I know a lot of people do not like to use curved needles, and I put a video out about how I use this. I I'm not sure how you would be able to do this without one. Um, be extremely difficult. Um, Awesome if you can. I, I'm in awe of you if you can because it, it is hard enough to do with the curve that I have going on here. All right, I'm going to go like this, catch this blue one. Okay. Ah, hot glue. Don't love the hot glue. When you gotta pull a needle through it. Talk about kill your hands. Okay. And yes, you see me mashing that cording right down into that problematic gutter making sure it rolls in and as I'm pulling it I'm doing it because I want to make sure it compresses correctly uh, yeah I can do it there back side back side Okay. All Can take these out now as I come around here and I'm going to now take 
this. Like that, because I want to make sure I have plenty to stuff down in there. Okay. And yes, I do the exact same thing on these ends. I look at how I want this to roll in. And I make the flat accordingly. I try, I've, I've done it so many times. If I just try to have masking tape on it, it's this huge. It just was so clunky to me. It didn't, it didn't make sense. So if I can have a flat piece to slide down in there, that's it, that if the fishing line pops off of, okay. So whether you use the tiniest bit of batting in between or you use a huge piece of fluff, I do all my ornaments the exact same way. Okay, so now I'm going to stuff it down in the hole. Let's hope it's deep enough. <laughs> okay. There. Okay. Yep, plenty of room for it. Plenty of room to pull this back over a little bit. Actually, I'll probably pull this up a little. And can't really see any ugliness from the back side. Bonus, bonus, because I've got no bow to cover there. Okay. And I am here, so I'm going to go like. This. Oof. Right. I come like I can see I'm gonna have to stuff that in a little further. Back in because I pulled it out a little. Okay. Um, grab in the back side there. So something to think about if you're trying to be a professional finisher, you need to make sure that uh, when they filled out the paperwork, uh, they might not have said, oh yes, I want a bow, no, I don't want a bow, um, or they get it and they really maybe aren't in love with it with a bow like they thought they would be. You really should finish it so that if they yank the bow off, they're not going to see mechanics okay I mean it's novel way to hide so you can see I'm I am going into the fabric have to up here Okay, but we want to try to keep the, the uh, creasing and pulling to a minimum. So we have to make sure as we're doing it that we pay attention 
to what it is doing to the fabric on the back. Okay. Because then if you don't and you get feel like you're done with it and you look at the back and you go, oh dear. I didn't see that ripple. Oh geez, almost stabbed myself. Alright, as you can see that that metallic shredded a little when I pulled it through. Right, I'm going to go here. I'm keeping this deep in the material when I'm in it because more than likely it will be in the glue area so it won't buckle the fabric too much. Now I have to, if you remember at the beginning, this did not want to sit where I wanted it to sit. There. And we have to pull that. Okay, so I'm going to grab this under this blue here. Okay, like that. I'm going to pull it and see how it pulls and it cinches it this way, okay? Alright, I'm going to bring it here, where we are going to run it into our base here. We're going to knot it, okay? Uh, now I gotta see if, okay, it stayed, not a, jeez, sometimes it won't, then it unfurls the entire thing, and yeah. <sighs> okay, looks really good. Uh, when I do a bow, I tend to put a bow, when I put the bow on, I tend to use a new piece of fishing line. For that reason right there. Okay. Okay. Ooh. I think I got a little piece of something off of my a piece of glue or something off of that. Okay. Glue my knot. So it doesn't just pull straight through. Got a little piece of schmutz on there. Okay. Oop. Okay. I'm going to slide this in under. Uh, bah. Do it from the short side that gutters too much. I'm hitting the glue knot there. Wonderful. Okay, so I have to bring it up there. Okay. All right. Gonna hold, I hope. Now I'm going to center 
the bow in front of that. And I'm going to try to decide. I'm going to start up top. Right through massive glue blob. Can't be easy, can it? No. There it is. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to put it over here this and I'm going to come up there because then oops, come back over the loop and pull it down and then I'm going to feed it through the loop so it's side to side and Sorry. And front to back. And you can see I got a little fold here, but there's nothing I can do about that. Ah, no. All right, fine. I'm going to insert it into the fabric. And I'm going to head over here to the side. Okay. Where I'm going to grab part of the loop. Yep, yep, yep. Just like that. Just, yeah. I'm going to cinch it down again and just let it naturally in like that. Okay. I go through again and I'm going to put my knot. Knot it. Whenever I say that, I think of one of your kids. You're like, knot it. Okay. I'm going to feed this line back through. So I have a nice long piece of fishing line there. So that if something pulls against it, the I haven't cut it so short, it's going to pop right back out. I see a little piece of fabric silk that disobedient. Push it back in. Okay. All right. So here is our main ornament. And yes, it does hang evenly. Sorry, you can't see it because of how I have the button. Looks pretty good. Let me make sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Push, push. Yeah. When you're handling it and sewing it so much. Yeah. Still in the gutter. Still in the gutter. Okay. Yep. All good. I hope this helped you with the. Uh, making puffed ornaments and flat ornaments and I'm because sh because you if you watch the box ornament video you see how I do flats all right good luck happy finishing